Hey everyone, my name is Mark Plant and this is MPV Vlogs. Hey everyone, like I said, my name is Mark Plant and this is MPV Vlogs. Thanks for coming in. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down on the bottom. It really does help out our channel. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, you know that I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. I am so close to the 2000 subscriber mark, I, I can almost taste it. So I appreciate all of your support that everyone's given us. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so let's get into the video here. Uh, it's just going to be an informational video real quick. Uh, for those of us who have cut the cord, uh, I'm one. I've cut the cord over a year ago. Do not miss it at all. Uh, I've done videos showing you my setup, how I have entertainment in my house, what channels I get, over-the-ear channels, the antenna that I use, uh, the DVR that I use. So, I, like I said, I do not miss cable at all. We actually, when we cut the cord, our cable bill dropped from almost $400 a month down to $111 a month. Uh, it, it's incredible how much we're saving by doing it this way. Uh, but there is some information, if you are cutting the cord, that will be coming up really soon. Uh, it's not something that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, it's probably going to be over the next five years. Uh, for those of you who can remember, um, back in the 1990s, late 1990s, uh, TV stations switched over from analog to digital signal. And that was a federal mandate to do that to open up frequencies for emergencies. Uh, that was a pain. A lot of people went through a lot of hassle on that. Uh, having to get new equipment if your TVs didn't handle the digital signal. Uh, it was so bad to the point where the federal government actually gave you a box that you could connect to your TV so that you could watch over the air TV. Well, we have something similar coming up. Um, the TV signal that you're watching right now is called AT, was it ATSC. 1.0. And this is basically the format that's been used since television started back in the 1940s. Uh, the way that it's broadcast through the antenna and how much bandwidth is used, uh, how quickly, it, there's a lot of information. I'll put some links below if you're interested in the technical stuff. Um, but what's coming out now, and it's starting to roll out slowly, is called ATSC 3.0, or what they're calling next-gen TV. And what this is, it's a different way for them to broadcast. They've, they've been able to change the signal so that they can pack more into the signal. Uh, there's a lot of things that they're going to be able to do with this. There's a lot of things that they haven't even found out that they can do with the ATSC 3.0 or next gen TV. Uh, one of the big things that they are able to do is to localize alerts, emergencies, such as like where I live here, I'm in the state of Rhode Island. And if there is a severe thunderstorm warning where I live, which is in the northern part of the state. Now, Rhode Island's only about 40 miles long. Uh, we're really small, but a thunderstorm warning where I live isn't important to someone who lives in the city of Newport, which is about 40 miles away. So they're able to, the local TV station, specify where certain alerts go. So I would see the alert here where I live in the northern part of the state, but people in the southern part of the state wouldn't see it. And this is true for any other place like uh, Washington, D.C., uh, someone in the northern metro area doesn't need to see what someone in the southern metro area, you, you understand, it, it's, they're able to specify with it. What it also allows is right now, if you do go over the air, you can see a lot of channels have sub-channels. Like the, one of the channels in my local area, which is I can, I'm actually able to pull in some Boston stations. One of my Boston stations has five sub-channels. So they can run alternate networks, uh, the Me TV, the Stadium TV, you know, those sub networks. Well, with this new, um, the next gen TV, they think that they could actually run up to 50 sub channels. 
And with the, the way that the signal is broadcast, you're able to send, they, they will send the signal to you, but they are also able to get information back. This is a questionable, a lot of people are questioning this for basically privacy issues. But what that'll do is, it's sort of like going to be, if you, say you go and you're looking for boots on the internet, you start go to Zappos and Amazon and stuff like that. You'll notice the next time you go on something like Facebook or Twitter, you'll see a ton of ads for boots. Well, that's what they're going to be able to do for the commercials is depending on your watching, uh, the, the way that you watch TV, they'll be able to direct specific ads to you to increase the return for the advertisers, which in turn the TV stations then would be able to charge more. You know, it, it's all money. Everything's money. So, I mean, it's always been too, so it's no surprise. Uh, a lot of people question uh, sending information to the TV stations. What information are they going to get? Still not crystal clear on, uh, on how it's going to be used. So uh, you, you'll hear a lot about that. And one of the other things that people are hesitant with the next gen TV is these stations now can be encrypted, which means a TV station could have you have to pay for a channel. I really don't see an over the air channel encrypting their main channel because it's going to cost them revenue. Uh, they get their money from the advertisers. And if I'm not able to see that channel, they're not getting, it's not worth it for them. But what I can see happening is something like a, a channel, an ABC channel, for instance, uh, with their sub channels, um, encrypting one of them and broadcasting ESPN on it. Um, maybe uh, having the, another channel encrypted and broadcast uh, Disney Plus on it. Uh, that sort of thing. So it's a subscription, which it normally is now. And in that case, I, I think it may actually even be a better system because in order to get like ESPN now for the most part, unless you're a full-time streamer, you would have to get a service, cable service or something like um, Hulu or Sling. Um, and then with those, you get 20, 30, 40 channels that you don't even want. So I think in the long run, that may be a better system. And what we may be seeing with, with this could be the end of cable TV. Uh, because the, the picture quality and the sound are supposed to be tremendous. Um, as the time that I'm recording this, there are some areas that are broadcasting the ATSC 3.0. Uh, in the Phoenix, Arizona area, there are channels out there that are broadcasting it. Washington, D.C. is broadcasting it. I know in my area they're saying that Boston is prepping for it. Um, so it's, it's coming. So just be prepared for it. Uh, one of the stipulations that I know there's out there right now is that when a channel does go over to the next-gen TV, they have to simulcast, I guess would be the best word, both the next gen TV and the current TV so that people have time to upgrade their equipment because yes, you're gonna have to upgrade your equipment. Uh, the way it's looking right now, it's probably gonna take about, about 10 years before everything totally goes to um, the ASTC 3.0. So they, they, for five, I think the federal government is requiring for five years, they have to broadcast both ASTC 3.0 and 1.0 at the same time, only on their main channel. Uh, so the sub channels will go over to the 3.0. And you, unless you have an ASTC 3.0 tuner, you won't be able to see them. So I'm just, I'm putting this information out because it is something to be aware of. Um, as of right now, there aren't too many ASTC 3.0 tuners available. Those that are, the, the majority of them that are available are well over a thousand dollars. There is one uh, Silicon Dust, uh, the HD Home Run, which I use right now. They've come out with an ASTC 3.0 um, box so that you would be able to get those signals. Uh, like I said, my area, I don't have it yet, so I haven't switched over to it. When I do, I'll do a video showing how to switch over and what you'll need to do. 
Uh, like I said, the benefits of it, uh, stations will now be able to broadcast in 4K. You also have on-demand video over the air. You won't need a special box, or you'll just need that special tuner, which I can see within the next two to three years, TVs being built with it automatically. Uh, from my understanding, with the ASTC 3.0 tuner, you still can get the 1.0 through that. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I believe that that's the way that it's going to work. There's a lot of benefits to it, still a lot of questions, and it is still a long way off. So you don't have to run out to Walmart today and buy a new TV. Um, I'll put links down on the bottom. There are maps showing which regions currently are broadcasting in this standard. And so that, you know, you could be aware and, you know, maybe if you're interested, you could switch over. Like I said, the only affordable box that I've seen is the Silicon Dust HD home run, and that's about $300 right now. So as it becomes more prevalent, the prices should come down just like the high definition TVs today. Because when everyone switched over to the digital, the high definition, a, a lot of the, the broadcasters were still broadcasting in standard definition. I mean, you can even go back, like if you see a rerun of the 70s show, uh, you'll see the boxes on the side for the most part. That means that it was still in standard definition. So you have plenty of time to do this. And uh, like I said, uh, the prices will come down, but just be aware that there is going to be a change. So, well, uh, that's about all the information that I have for this now. If you have any questions, comments, or any other information on this topic you, you want to leave me, leave it in the comments below. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help my channel. I am so close to 2,000 subscribers right now. I would love to get there by the end of this month. Uh, it would really help me out. If you are already are a subscriber, thank you guys so much. I do appreciate it. Uh, you're the reason why I'm able to do these videos. Uh, so, yep, that's it. Any new news that I get on the standard, I will do a video on. I'll let you guys know. Check out my website, which is markplant.com. I have more information there also, again, with the links, but I will be putting the links on the bottom of this video also. So leave me a comment, let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you guys again real soon.